Hello friends, I am Dr. Ashutosh Kelkar and my hobby is to play harmonica. I am still learning and there is a long way to go but I am enjoying it immensely. One of our harmonica fraternity friends, Dr. Durdarshi Singh from Patiala, Punjab is very popular uh, on his YouTube channel. He has a harmonica learning channel and he has got lakhs of followers because he explains everything in a very simple language and in a very friendly manner. Of late, he had a lot of questions from the audience regarding the pros and cons of playing harmonica in patients who have got respiratory or cardiac diseases or who have recovered from such diseases and he directed them to me so I got a lot of uh, phone calls, messages, emails so I decided to make a small uh, scientific video explaining everything to you Before going ahead, we must understand that the basic working unit of human body is a cell. There are millions of cells in the body and the cells which perform similar functions are clubbed uh, together in a tissue. The tissue they form an organ. Organs doing similar work they form they uh, form a system so there are many organs in many many systems like uh, digestive system comprising of the food pipe or the uh, esophagus then the stomach then the small and large intestines uh, the supporting glands like liver pancreas etc we have the uh, cardiovascular system we have the respiratory system we have got the nervous system we have got skin and bones and excretory system and so many of them but you must understand that the basic unit of every system every organ every tissue is a cell okay now these cells they require glucose oxygen and many nutrients not only to survive but to function properly and this job of supplying all the cells with oxygen glucose and nutrients is done by uh, two major systems of our body one is cardiovascular system and another is respiratory system now in short I will talk about the anatomy and physiology of each of this system. You know, cardiovascular system consists of a major organ, heart, and the collecting and distributing systems. Collecting systems are veins, vena cava, distributing systems um, is iota and arteries. Okay, so heart uh, basically is a is a pump, is a muscular pump having chambers inside it, having cavities inside it. Do, when the heart relaxes it collects blood from the all the parts of the body uh, this blood is deoxygenated or impure heart contracts and pumps this blood to the lungs to purify then lungs purify the blood oxygenate the blood and it is returned to the heart heart again relaxes and accommodates the pure blood coming from the lungs and again it contracts and pushes it through the arteries to all the organs here we must understand one thing is that <clears throat> heart is the only organ in the body which starts working at a very early age six weeks of intrauterine life means after conception when the fetus when the embryo becomes six weeks you can detect the heart beats so the heart starts beating and it beats continuously till death there is no rest if heart takes rest the person takes permanent rest he dies so the heart has to work this is important thing another thing is that when these heart muscles are working 24 by 7 365 days 
uh, a year they also need uh, enough glucose oxygen and nutrients to function properly so there are coronary arteries special arteries uh, start from the from the root of the aorta from where the uh, uh, the the supplying main artery starts from that root the coronary arteries right and left they emerge and they supply the uh, heart muscles so this is uh, the heart heart beats normally are from 50 to 70 in uh, a healthy resting individual okay <clears throat> uh, now we come to the respiratory system respiratory system consists of starts from nostrils uh, mouth then the um, voice box or larynx then the windpipe or trachea trachea divides into two bronchi then this bronchi they further branch out like a inverted tree and it branches out and gives many many branches the smallest branches are called uh, bronchioles to these terminal bronchioles are attached clusters of alveoli or air sacs like bunch of grapes all these uh, air pipes like uh, trachea the bronchi the bronchioles they are lined externally by circular muscles and when the muscles contract its lumen narrows it uh, becomes constricted and when it relaxes it becomes it dilates so the lumen enlarges this is required uh, during our normal breathing the whole thing the the uh, uh, bronchi the bronchioles or the clusters of millions of alveoli they are bound together by a connective tissue a connective tissue called an interstitial connective tissue and uh, the whole thing forms a spongy organ called as lung we have two lungs one on each side of the chest these lungs again are covered by thin but airtight membrane called as pleura pleura has got two layers one which covers the lungs and the other layer continues and covers the chest wall from inside the significance of this i'll tell you now what happens uh, in our uh, chest i mean um, lungs are uh, surrounded from the sides by the ribs and the intercostal muscles and below is a tough muscle called as diaphragm which which is a flat transverse muscles uh, transverse muscle which separates uh, the chest from the abdomen and when uh, these intercostal muscles and diaphragm contracts the chest cavity expands because contraction of these muscles uh, expands the chest and the diaphragm also goes down so now negative pressure is created between two layers of pleura negative pressure this negative pressure draws the air from outside from nostril and mouth the air is drawn and this is inspiration or inhalation now this inhaled air uh, goes to the bronchi the membranes uh, sorry goes to the alveoli and the membrane facilitates the gaseous transfer the oxygen goes in inside the body the blood vessel uh, the used carbon dioxide is thrown inside and then uh, comes phase of uh, expiration or exhalation where uh, the stretched lung of, uh, comes into elastic recoil it's like a rubber you st stretch it and leave it recoils so when it recoils the air is thrown out this is exhalation or expiration this is a normal cycle normally this cycle of uh, inspiration and expiration uh, in a minute we breathe uh, 15 to 20 times normally uh, in resting phase what happens in resting phase or when we are doing mild um, sort of exercise most of the alveoli i mean many of the alveoli they do not uh, come into picture because we have been provided with excess alveoli so normally only 50 to 60% of the alveoli they work when we um, do respiration when we 
breathe. Rest of the alveoli, the terminal alveoli, they don't come into picture. So what happens? You know, in school, there are some backbenchers, backbencher students who sit at the backside, who don't don't take active part in uh, studies, who do not study. So these alveoli are like backbencher students. They usually don't take part in gaseous exchange, don't take part in breathing. And what happens as a result of this, like the students, the backbencher students fail. They don't pass. They do, They are not promoted to the higher grades. These alveoli, these backbencher alveoli, they eventually stop functioning altogether. So it is studied that between age of 30 to 70, nearly, nearly 50% of the alveoli only remain functioning. The rest of them do not function. So this happens uh, if you don't recruit these backbenchers, you don't teach them, you don't be after them to work. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, after having uh, known the uh, anatomy and physiology of these two systems, uh, we should also know as to how to keep these two systems fit. To keep heart fit, heart is a muscle. To keep any muscle fit, you have to uh, you have to exercise. You have to work out. So, how will you work out the heart muscle by increasing the rate of the heart, asking the heart to work more? This is not in our hand. Respiration is partially voluntary. If I want, I can breathe faster. I can breathe. 50, 40 times a minute, 45 times a minute, I can uh, breathe slowly, I can breathe 10, 10 times a minute. It is partially voluntary and if you your attention is diverted to somewhere else, then the body takes over and uh, keeps the breathing uh, active as per the need. Heart is not like that. Heart beats at the rate of 50 to 70 uh, beats per minute in a normal healthy adult. And if you want to work out the heart, it has to beat faster. So aerobic exercises come into picture then. What, is, what are aerobic exercises? The peripheral muscles of the body, if they work, if they do some exercise, like, uh, like jogging, like running, uh, like lifting heavy weights, like going to gym, cycling, swimming, when these muscles are uh, uh, doing exercise, their demand increases, their demand for oxygen, their demand for um, glucose and nutrients increase. And to be able to supply this increased demand, the heart has to pump harder, heart has to work more, it has to increase the beating. It beats say 100 beats per minute, 120 beats per minute, maybe up to 140 beats per minute to, to provide uh, to the needs, to the increased needs of these muscles. This is called as aerobic exercise. So this way you can uh, keep the heart uh, healthy. But again, one very important thing, as I told you, the heart muscles, the cells of the muscles of the heart, they also must get the required, uh, because their demand also increases, they also must get increased oxygen, increased glucose, increased nutrients. For that the coronaries have to be open, okay, there, there cannot be any blocks in the coronaries because if the blood supply reduces then you can have a heart attack. So to keep the coronaries intact you have to uh, take care of obesity, obesity must not be there. If you have uh, hypertension or diabetes they must be kept under control and most important um, cholesterol because cholesterol clogs the arteries, the coronaries from inside, reduces the lumen, narrows narrows them and reduces the blood supply of the heart muscles. So you have to keep the cholesterol within a required level. For that you have to have healthy diet and regular exercise. So this is about heart. For lungs, I told you uh, to keep these dormant um, uh, alveoli uh, working you have to go for specific breathing exercises. What is the meaning of that? That you have to breathe forcefully. You have to inhale deeply 
and exhale forcefully because when you do that then only the uh, air will reach the last of the alveoli and keep them working and uh, uh, will ask them to be on their toes no come on you have to work and that way they will remain in the mainstream so even if you age your all the alveoli will be working so that is the importance of keeping the uh, respiratory i mean keeping the lungs healthy so this can be achieved by uh, pranayam you know there are various uh, types of pranayam i don't know much of them but i heard basrika or kapalbhati there you uh, do forceful inspiration and forceful expiration and uh, Uh, exercise the lungs same thing can be achieved by playing harmonica because harmonica is the only wind instrument which entails uh, blows and draws you blow you produce sound you draw you produce another sound like this so harmonica playing harmonica also does the same thing you know um, what happens in harmonica you don't have to push uh, harder or inhale deeply when you play a party any song you know at some places there are continuous blows there are continuous draws so you uh, inhale air slowly maybe but for a longer time then it reaches the last of the alveoli okay so this is about um, uh, the exercises of the heart and lungs to keep them healthy now we come to uh, the main question that many people have that what what uh, the pros and cons of playing harmonica in disease disease of the lungs and heart see for heart in fact uh, even if the heart is disease or even if the heart has recovered from any injury playing harmonica does not do anything bad to the heart because what happens it has no direct effect on the heart you play harmonica your oxygen saturation increases your alveoli they start working and the uh, oxygen saturation goes high so it is good for the heart it doesn't do anything you don't have to put your heart into uh, playing harmonica right so for anybody uh, who has undergone uh, say angiography angioplasty or uh bypass surgery or who is recovering from heart attack they can safely play harmonica no problem in fact i have undergone a major uh, six vessel bypass surgery in 2014 and thanks to the bypass surgery i took up uh, uh, playing harmonica and uh, i'm happy with it um so that's it so heart disease no problem about diseases of the lungs you know diseases of the lungs are divided into two one is acute and one is chronic acute means short duration starting early and ending early and chronic means uh, starting slowly and lingering over period of months or years which are the acute diseases of the uh, of the lungs they can be from pneumonia from bronchitis from tracheitis from uh, sinusitis from pharyngitis to you are common cough and cold all these are acute because usually uh, they don't remain uh, for more than 7 to 10 days in any acute uh, illnesses in any acute disease uh, body needs rest because in any disease any organ any system if there is a disease the the cells are swollen the cells are swollen they are lethargic they function less they need rest like when you are tired you need sleep if somebody asks you to work when you are tired when you want to sleep you can't uh, work properly you will fall ill same is the condition of the um, disease cell it is swollen it works less so rest is very important nature mother nature takes care and heals most of the diseases and rest is very important part of uh, natural healing so rest is important so do not play harmonica during acute illness 
during acute phase during which lasts for 7 to 10 days i told you because you don't want to uh, flock a tired ho- horse during recovery see uh, the what is the natural history of any disease or any ailment uh, say for example you get a fracture you uh, put a plaster or you fix it by screws and you give rest it heals till that time you don't walk on it you don't move it but when it heals when it almost heals you start physiotherapy you start mobilizing because the muscles they have gone lax i mean and uh, they have forgotten their uh, natural activity so you do physiotherapy and uh, again bring it back to motion same is true with uh, uh, lung diseases when the recovery starts you start exercising you start doing pranayam or you start playing harmonica because you want to give physiotherapy to the recovering cells so uh, what is important is that in acute uh, illnesses do not play harmonica when the phase is acute during first 7 to 10 days but start playing gradually to give physiotherapy to the recovering uh, lung tissue fine now we come to chronic ailments of the lungs chronic diseases are mainly two um, one is uh, bronchial asthma it may be infective it may be um, allergic and the other is chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases termed as copd these two diseases are uh, lingering they are chronic and they stay with us for uh, months to years and they they cripple you cripple means you are troubled you are coughing you are short of breath your oxygen saturation is not all that good and so many systems which uh, depend on good oxygen saturation i mean almost all the systems they also don't work properly so in this playing harmonica is very good because it has been proved i mean uh, by experience that uh, it recruits the uh, alveoli it improves the oxygenation of the blood it is seen that playing harmonica uh, reduces the need of medicine i mean the uh, if you are taking say uh, six tablets a day it comes down to four to three uh, like that so it reduces the need of medicine and uh, scientific data is that uh, the resonance the resonance of the sound uh, liquefies the Um, the mucus because there is mucus inside which you are not able to throw out because it is thick the resonance of the sound of harmonica liquefies it and you are um, you can uh, throw it out in a better way this is one theory and in fact you know uh, for these diseases for chronic diseases of the lungs uh, they have devised medical harmonicas they are slightly different than these are routine harmonicas because it entails puckering Uh, playing with puckering puckering means uh, pushing air or drawing air through one hole one small hole i mean uh, that puts uh, the, that needs extra energy extra uh, extra efforts uh, so it is better for the lungs another thing is that uh, the uh, the sound the sound it produces is different and that sound the frequency of that sound is better for uh, liquefaction of the um of the thick mucus so um, the problem is the pro- in this uh, current era of uh, advanced science you know medicine has become evidence based uh, there is there is no weightage to anybody's personal views or personal opinions if i say that in my opinion uh, playing harmonica does wonders to the chronic uh, lung diseases it it has it carries no weight because medicine has become evidence based you need to have um, scientific clinical trials you need to prove it statistically uh, there has to be everything which is documented which can be reproduced so then there, there have to be good studies good scientific studies proving that and fortunately in pune uh, nandu belwalkar sir who is a a doyen of harmonica along with dr swapnil kulkarni who is a pulmonologist dr abhijit joshi who is a physician and cardiologist 
डॉक्टर आनंद जोशी एंड जोशी हॉस्पिटल वेरी रेपुटेड हॉस्पिटल इन पुणे दे आर सून स्टार्टिंग क्लिनिकल ट्रायल ऑफ यूजिंग मेडिकल हार्मोनिकास फॉर क्रॉनिक पलमनरी डिसीज क्रॉनिक लंग डिसीजेस एंड सून दे विल कम आउट विथ एविडेंस सो दैट वी कैन वी कैन टेल पॉजिटिवली दैट येस प्ले हार्मोनिका एंड बी बेटर I think um, I have uh, uh, tried to answer most of your questions. Thank you, Dr. Dudashi Singh. You are an inspiration. Thank you, viewers. Thank you for following. Bye bye.